Hey guys, Stephanie here. This is a layout that I had originally put together for two peas in a bucket, but sadly they are now closed, so I thought I would share it here on my blog. The layout that I'm going to be sharing with you today is a two page layout that covers a day in our life. This is um, the first two page layout that I've actually ever done, and it was a lot of fun. I've always been intimidated by all the white space and the blank space. But it was a lot of fun to put together, and then I look forward to showing you how to do it. So to start off, I'm just going to show you some of the supplies that I have pulled out um, to go along with my page. A lot of them are colors that I pulled from the mood board at Two Peas in a Bucket this month, and then just a couple other ones that I threw in there. Um, this one is a new one from Studio Calico uh, South of Market. Um, that one, I think, is a new fan. These next two are the new Fancy Pants. And I'm probably going to go with the lighter sides. And then those two are um, the My Mind's Eye Essentials, the Woods, and then the Metallics. I also have two pieces of white cardstock, which are going to be my base, um, as well as some cork stickers, South of Market Studio Calico, and some Evilicious um, epoxy stickers. I cleaned out my craft room and organized a bunch of some new supplies that have come out recently and I put them in this fun little um, Lazy Susan. So I have some Chic Tags um, Transparent Alpha, um, some Simple Stories tags and little bits and pieces. Um, labels that will go perfect um, with my page. I have some more of the um, chic tags. These have the little metallic accents that I thought would be a pretty pop on the page. Um, and some of the softer colors like the yellows and the blues with a little bit of the gold. And I have some wood veneer um, also from chic tags. I like to I like the wood veneer on layouts. It's just a nice little subtle um, look. And it's super neutral and just pretty much goes with just about anything. And then I also have in the middle here some flare, some Evilicious and Chic Tags. Um, not quite sure what I'm going to use, but I just pulled out some things that kind of coordinated and the collection obviously coordinates well together. So I'm thinking I might use those. And over here I just have just a bunch of little random flare and clips and things that have gotten t tossed in there. So I'm going to show you my photos um, and these photos are from a series that I do on my blog which is 12 on the 12th and I take photos on the 12th of each month, 12 photos on the 12th of each month to kind of chronicle our day. So this is our day in a life. These are, <clears throat> these bottom ones are photos that I printed off of the Collect app and I so I had both of these, um, printed both of these. I wasn't really sure how I wanted to do my layout because I knew I had two 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock. So I knew I wanted to have a number of photos. Um, so I printed off both of these. These are just May that already have the journaling and the date down there. So I thought maybe I could span those across my pages. Um, so I'm not sure about those. And then these are the 12 and the 12. I just printed these using the Pick Monkey. Um, website, which is how I do most of my collages. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is, since I'm not really sure how I want my the direction of my page right this second, I'm just going to just try out a couple different things and see what works best with my photos and kind of an, get an idea of what I've got. So here I have these six pictures, um, these are actually not from 12 and the 12th. These were pictures from May. I, May was National Photography Month, so I took a picture for every day in May of myself and my kids or whatever we were doing. So I was thinking maybe I could span it across like that and try to keep it pretty symmetrical. Um, and I like that. I like the look, but those already have the journaling and the date on there. So I was trying to figure out how I can make those work. And then here I have this page here. I could cut these out. I'm thinking maybe I could cut them out and then do two rows of six maybe. Um, but then here I'm just going to line it up with that middle seam down the middle of my two 12 by 12 pieces of paper. I'm thinking I might use it, lay it, um, lay my photo across that 
seam and have a couple photos on one side and a title on the other side. So I think I'm going to stick with this one. Um, and my title, I wanted to try to do a day in the life. So I'm just going to pull out my alpha here. And I love these transparent alphas. I think they look really pretty on um, white cardstock or patterned, cards or patterned um, paper. So here's my title, A Day in the Life. I'm just going to slide my picture back over. I'm thinking I'm going to have those three, the far left hand um, column on one side of the page and then the other columns on the right hand side of my double page layout. And I'm just playing around with the alpha here. So to try to get the two pages to um, look like they're, you know, one page or to, since they will be in two separate page protectors, just to kind of have some continuity between the pages. I was thinking maybe I could do my title um, half on one side and half on the other. I don't really love the way that looks. Um, that, which le more because it leaves me with a large um, bit of white space on the left hand side of my page and the right hand side of the page looks pretty full. So I'm thinking maybe I can slide my title over here and fill up some of that space on the left hand side and see um, maybe if it would work kind of like that, have a title to the left hand side with one comma photo and then the photos on the other hand side. Um, and I don't think I'm going to trim out the photos from my eight and a half by 11 piece of photo paper into individual squares. I could, um, and it definitely would add a little bit more probably texture and dimension to my page and because all those images are you know, obviously on one sheet, but I kind of like um, how clean it looks like that right there. So I'm thinking I'm going to keep it like that. Um, and right now I'm just playing around this, the um, Chic Tags Alpha, Transparent Alpha, there are two sh shades of green in there. I'm not sure if you can see it. There's like a lighter, more of kind of like a lime green and then more of kind of like a aqua greeny. So I was just trying to see if that was, if I can mix it out and get one shade of green, but I kind of like it with the different shades there. So I was just playing with the alpha there. Now I'm just going to take my photo to my paper trimmer and I'm going to trim off that far left hand column there. And just trim it right, that one side right off. And then that leaves me kind of that space in between the left hand page and the right hand page. So I'll have the photos on the left with the title and then on the right side I'll have the rest of my collage of photos from our day. I'm pulling out my pattern papers now and I just want to add a little pop of color underneath my photo collage there. I feel like the white background is pretty and clean but I feel like it might need just a little bit of color um, and just a little bit more movement underneath the collage photos. But you could keep it super simple by just adding the collage and the title, maybe a couple little embellishments. So I know that my photo is, um, the dimensions of my photo are eight and a half by 11, although I trimmed off um, that, that left hand column, which is probably a couple of inches, two and a half inches maybe. So I'm, I'm just going to eyeball it here. I'm not going to try to be exact or really worry about it being the exact size. So I'm going to make it roughly um, eight and a half by 11. Um, and I'm just going to check out and see how that looks with the photo before I go ahead and cut it. Um, I think that looks okay. So I'm just going to grab my paper trimmer. I'm just going to eyeball it using my photo as the placement right there. And just cut off um, a little space for that left hand side row of photo or column of photos. I'm just going to do the same thing here to um, the piece of metallic paper from the My Mind's Eye Essentials Collection after I get this lined up. So I'm going to trim this one again, roughly the 8.5 by 11, 
um, and then kind of trim off a side, a part for the left hand side and a part for the right hand side. And when I lay these down, um, I definitely want it to um, the left hand side and the right side to go together, but I don't want them to be exactly perfect and exactly the same. So here on the right side, I left that little bit of that gold paper, that gold vellum paper popping out on the right, and then on the left side, I tucked it underneath my pattern paper. So it just adds, you can tell that um, all the same papers were used, but it's not exactly perfect, which is fun to do sometimes. Um, and, I, and I often do, instead of trying to make it perfect and every corner square up and every piece of paper square up, just kind of tuck them in there um, and let each side be a little bit different and keep it from being too perfect and too matchy-matchy. I'm going to straighten my tile up there and I'm pretty happy with the paper layers underneath the photo. And I think now I'm just going to grab out um, some of my embellishments and just kind of adorn the page with just a simple little embellishments here and there. Nothing too terribly much, but I do want to fill in some of that blank space around the photos and see what looks good there. So in the top right hand picture, um, that's my son driving his little car, battery operated car. Um, I added one of the wood veneer right in the middle of the picture. And then here I have um, some of those chic tags tags, the ones that have the metallic little elements and a couple little arrows and flare. I'm not going to add one to every photo just so it's not too overwhelming or too many embellishments for my personal taste. So here I'm just pretty much doing kind of adding to my comfort level, which I, I definitely like to have little clusters of embellishments and little embellishments on my page. So I'm definitely probably may add more than, than somebody else or maybe not as many as somebody else. So it's really just a personal preference. So here's some of those simple stories. That's one of those little file tabs. Thinking about maybe sticking that up there and adding the date right there. And I'm just going to sprinkle a few more little embellishments around the page. A couple little the cork accents, grabbed out some stars, just kind of playing around here, seeing what might work. I like adding um, the embellishments, not necessarily around the photos, but underneath the photos or on top of the photos and just keeping it a little, a little different. So here I have some frames. Um, these are the Maggie Holmes frames from her style board collection. thought about maybe adding one of those, maybe the gold one, but I didn't really like the way that one looked. And I have just a few more little stickers here. These are the My Mind's Eye Market Street collection. thought about maybe adding a few of those just a few more little embellishment clusters. So for this page, it really is a group of photos, a collage of photos, a large title, and then random little embellishments around the photo. It was a, and is a very simple page, and it was it's pretty simple to put together. It's really just playing, getting those photos, getting the photos printed sometimes is the hardest part, and adding the little bit of embellishments and figuring out a placement for everything. So I'm going to grab this little tag here, this little label that says today. I'm thinking about adding it under there. These sticker, they're stickers. So I try not to stick anything down until I'm 100% certain that that's where I want it to go. Sometimes I'll stick it on my pant leg or on my carpet or something, try to get some hair fibers on there so it's not as sticky so I can remove it. But if you don't do that, they are pretty sticky once you press them all the way down. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with kind of the way the page is right now. I thought I'd maybe add in another sticker, just kind of eyeballing and see how things look. 
but I think I'm pretty happy with the embellishments and the stickers. So I'm just going to use my tiny attacher and I'm going to staple along the middle and then just kind of pull up my edges a little bit so it doesn't lay so flat. And I'm going to use my adhesive and add my first photo strip. And I use my tiny attacher just because I feel like adhesive is um, such a an expensive item. So I try to use my tiny attacher to hold my paper layers and stuff down instead of using a whole lot of adhesive. I, I feel like it holds papers and photos together perfectly perfectly fine. So I'm just going to staple a couple of times and flare up my little edges there. And then added my photo back down to the page right there. And I did use um, or I am going to use adhesive on the back sides of my paper layers right now, but I will go back and um, use a little bit of hot glue to hold them into place because I feel like they're pretty heavy being such a large piece of paper and a couple paper layers. Um, sometimes I feel like they shift or can move pretty easily. So I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive there and try to get it to stick on down. And then I'm going to go back and we'll add a couple little dots of hot glue because once you hot glue it down, it is not going anywhere. So I'm just going to add this side over here. And try to get it as straight as possible. Um, and I'm not sure if you can tell from the photo or from this, the video image right here, but my pictures do not line up, my paper layers do not line up perfectly. So I'm trying to get the actual eight and a half by 11 photo and the, the white space in between the photos, the columns to line up and then the paper layers, some peaks out a little bit below and some peaks out a little bit above. And I'm totally fine with that. I like it being just a little bit different, not 100% um, straight lines. Okay, so now that the photos and embellishments are pretty much done, I just wanted to add a little bit in this bottom left-hand corner. I felt like um, there was a lot of white space over in that corner, and it would be the perfect place to add maybe a little tag and a couple little stickers, maybe a date or something like that. So I'm going to add, um, these are just a couple of those stickers from the My Mind's Eye Market Street collection, and I just, one was a banner, I think, or had little banner on it on the end and so I just kind of trim that off and then I have a frame here this is from the um, open road crepe paper open road collection their chipboard frames so I was gonna add that there and I'm thinking that maybe I might want to add a tag or something in there so I just have a small white office supply tag I'm just gonna add that in there with that frame right on top and that the window of the frame is going to give me the perfect place to add um, a sticker or a few more embellishments. So just grabbed out a lowercase b here for my, our last name and then a star. These are the um, Crate Paper Open Road Awesome Alpha. I have two of them there. I was trying to figure out if I wanted the lowercase or the uppercase but I think I'm going to stick with that. I like the, the pop of that darker color with the um, sticker, that the best of days darker sticker on that left-hand column. So I think I'm going to add that there and maybe sneak in a little Evilicious Today epoxy sticker. And now it's time to get my title into place. So for my title, um, I think I'm going to stitch my title into place. So these are those Chic Tags transparent, letter, transparent letters. Um, and if I used my roller, uh, rolling adhesive, you could probably see the little glue dots underneath the letters, um, which wouldn't be that big a deal, but my concern would be more about the letters slipping or falling and not staying glued on. So you could always use glossy accents or maybe a little strip of hot glue, but um, I have my, show, my sewing machine right beside me and I'm going to use my sewing machine to hold my letters into place. So to, when you run things through a sewing machine, it tend, they tend to slip. 
So I am just gonna use a little bit of washi tape. I'm gonna sew my letters through the middle, um, through the middle of each transparent letter. And I'm gonna use my washi tape to hold down the top of my letters. So that way when I run them through my sewing machine, they won't move. I'm pretty sure that Marcy did this on one of her layouts and I thought it was such a genius, ingenious idea. So I'm gonna do it. I learned from her and I'm gonna follow through because it just makes life a little bit easier. So I pulled out the, um, I'm doing every other word. That way I don't have to worry about my tape and I could try to make sure everything was lined up pretty well. And again, I'm not worried about them being perfect or perfectly straight. I actually like it when it's a little off center or not so, so perfect. So as you can see there, I went over and ran it through my sewing machine. You can see the little bit of thread there right through the middle. Um, so now I'm just gonna take off the washi and then do the middle layer. So just pulling that washi right off. And then I'm gonna add my middle words there and then use the washi to tape it back down. And then I'm gonna take it right back over to my sewing machine and run those letters right through. And there you can see the sewing right at the title and all the little embellishments. And here's a look at the finished page. A little bit of detail shots, the stitching and the embellishments. And my collage of photos, I just wrote my journaling down in the bottom right hand corner and then added a date stamp to finish my page. Thanks so much for joining me here on my blog. Hopefully I'll have more videos for you trying to figure out the best place to share them, um, but hopefully I'll have more here soon. Thanks guys.